So morning, everyone. Morning to those who are joining live, whether you striding out in nature with your daughter, how special Sol and Demi send you both love, or whether you are just driving to work or sitting in your bed or at your desk, just you're all welcome. And those who are listening later, you're all welcome too. Um, lovely to have you, lovely to have you all. I'm just starting this morning with a bit of a settling practice like we always do. Uh, as you know, I love putting my frankincense, either my roller um, or, or my oil and just dipping a bit onto my palate. Oops, I'm just doing my mindful moment. Sorry, I doubt Pips is here. <laughs> She's about to go book her drivers. She's about to be picked up. So there might be noise when she is. Um, and this is my rose roller, which connects me to divine love. And so, as I said last week, if it's something that appeals and you don't have frankincense and rose, which we all absolutely love, um, Stronger is a nice little roller it's from the kids' kit and it has both in them. So morning, everyone, to probably my least prepared mindful moment ever. Um, I am, yeah. And last night I was sitting, um, actually Pips and I were having dinner together. It's so nice having our trip girls on their study leave and um, they're around a bit more and we went for a walk and, and I said, I haven't chosen a poem yet for my mindful moment. I don't really know what poem to do. So she said, well, read them to me, mum, and let's see. So I read, read her about four or five, and we came up with two um, that we kind of narrowed it down to. One was Hopi Elder Speaks, which is one of my favorites. As you know, if you've been here for any period of time, you'll know um, we've done that a few times. And it really resonated with me this time, but it didn't feel wasn't quite ready and so I said to Pips well let me do it tomorrow morning because I often I often only choose the poem because of what arises in me in the morning and um, this morning so as many of you know I have um, my my spring shed intention is about giving myself breathing space and physically and mentally and emotionally helping with my sinuses which are progressing very nicely I'm doing um something more constant more because that's my my thing is that I I do things it helps and then I let go of them and then it, it reverses and so um so now I'm being more consistent in my daily practices um of for so I'm putting castor oil I'm putting flute I'm um I'm um, actually also because I think it's all got to do with an implant that I've got um, I'm putting clove and um, on guard over that gum area um, I'm still I also think it's to do with COVID and the spike protein and I didn't have the COVID vaccine but the spike protein is in the in COVID and the vaccine and it sheds and so if you're around people who've had it the vaccine you can also have it so I'm doing stuff to detox from that um, so I'm bringing a lot of consciousness to that I'm trying to close more tabs on my laptop, trying to um, be more intentional with my day and not as reactive and um, not sort of setting out what I'm wanting to create in my day and trying to do time blocking. So, so far, the time blocking is is going terribly. There, there has not, I have not even sat down to do time blocking because last Wednesday I had Finn's new boy assessment uh, appointment at my class and it was such a special day taking him to get his uniform and to get his laptop and to, to have meet the housemaster. And we had such a special day together um, to take a photo of every, I couldn't, uh, you know, you also, President, I couldn't even reply to WhatsApps while he's having his uniform changes because he wanted me to take a photo of every single uniform change and send it to dad and everyone else so that they could see. And so, and then the next day was Pips's valedictory service and which was just so beautiful and so profound and so touching. And she did a beautiful drama performance in it. And she got awards and an award. They do awards in the valedictory service. They kind of combine. And then the next, then we had parents for dinner. Some of the Wickham parents who've been on this journey with us. Then the next day we had, anyway, we we had her awards, her final awards assembly, and the letting go of the balloons and and so much. Um, and then we went away for the weekend with them, 
then this week it's just kind of been a running start into but my life has been in flow and I've been where I've meant to be um Candace did these fabulous talks yesterday some of you were on them on um on study and studying and that was something just that arose last week so my nice time block day I landed up being on two calls which I absolutely loved and which fed my soul and I also needed some of that input because it's not just for studying it's for work and she has got the recordings available if you would like to know them and our builder arrived um with a paving guy and actually we we made all sorts of changes and decisions and things like that which so it was so it was such flow it was such perfect timing for everything but I didn't get to do what I, I needed to do and got to bed last night and this has become a pattern for me now I've got 50 WhatsApps to to read and reply to because I haven't got to them in the day and I start to reply and I just think this can't be the way. This can't be, I'm trying to be intentional and I'm, this, this can't be the way. So when I woke up this morning, before I even started to prepare my mind for a moment, I started to look at what it was that I needed to get done and what I could ask other people to do. And so like when Pippa's going to go and book her driving license with the instructor this morning, I said, well, you, you, they're going to Moira River and they're coming back through or they'll be driving the highway through Howick. And I said, is there any way you could collect this and this from Howick from me? Because that will save me a trip. And the driving instructor said, with pleasure. And then with posting on our spring shed this morning, anyway, there was a conversation. I realized that people have my back and, and we've got each other. Um, I've asked Emma, the lovely Emma is helping me now with my admin. I'm, I put tasks for her to do that took off so much from my to-do list. And so, so much, so I suddenly realized that it's about asking for help and receiving. And I'd had this conversation with a patient last week um, who came to me. She runs a, a very, very big international business. She travels an enormous amount. She, um, she, 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 she is in real masculine energy and she was kind of frazzled and something big had happened and people had pulled out of something and they needed payments and they cash flow and this and that. And her whole right side was stuck. Her whole her whole right side of her body was stiff and stuck and tight. And, and I said, this is your masculine energy. You're holding so much. And, um, and something that I would encourage you from my physio perspective is just today to receive. And even just if it's a receiving a cup of tea, asking someone to make you a cup of tea, asking someone to support you in something, asking someone to help you and just to receive. And it's something we need to practice. I need to practice more and more to, to allow because we, we're so um, driven in our society and so like independent and I must do it and I should be capable of doing it and I must do it all myself. And, um, and so that kind of struck me. So I was asking people to help me and I just thought I've got to ask for help because I can't do this. And then I opened my Canva to, to choose which of the poems I was going to do for the mindful moment. And it just opened onto this poem, Everything is Waiting for You by David White, which is such a beautiful poem. If you don't know David White, he is the most incredible English poet. Um, the way he reads and performs his poems is, a, is a just incredible. Um, I really encourage you after this to, to go onto his YouTube or to his website and say, is a search Everything is Waiting for You and try and hear him reading it to you because um it's astounding and so um and so this poem came up and I read it and I was like oh my gosh this is for me I don't have to do it alone so I'm going to read it now and then I'll read it again when um we do in our moment for a moment because there's more God had more messages for me this morning everything is waiting for you your great mistake is to act the drama as if you were alone, as if life were a progressive and cunning crime with no witness to the tiny hidden transgressions. To feel abandoned is to deny the in intimacy of your surroundings. Surely, even you, at times, have felt the great array. The swelling presence and the chorus crowding out your solo voice. You must note the way the soap dish enables you or the window latch grants you freedom. Alertness is the hidden discipline of familiarity. 
The stairs are your mentor of things to come. The doors have always been there to frighten you and invite you. And the tiny speaker in the phone is your dream, way, dream ladder to divinity. The tiny speaker in the phone is your dream ladder to divinity. Put down the weight of your aloneness and ease into the conversation. The kettle is singing, even as it pours you a drink. The cooking pots have left their arrogant aloofness and seen the good in you at last. All the birds and creatures of the world are unutterably themselves. Everything is waiting for you. And so um, with the spring shed, um, which many of you are on, I have managed to do the daily practices most mornings. We focused on um, clean eating. I did the juice fast. Um, I've continued to do have a lot of juice in my diet and things. I've printed out the recipes. I haven't put them into the flip folder yet. I haven't even done one of the recipes. I did the one um, that someone posted on the on the spring shed at Polani, I think it was, um, of what she'd done. And I saw the visual um, encouragement and I was like, okay, I can do that. When we came back on Sunday after being away, um, we'd had a weekend where we'd celebrated with our girls. And so we hadn't eaten like the spring shed and drank like the spring shed, but we had enjoyed it and I'd enjoyed it mindfully and with presence and with with enjoyment and I've done it the best that I could um I didn't have bread and things like that anyway but there's so much of the spring shed that I still haven't yet absorbed and so my intention is on Monday once our spring shed officially finishes to go back to day one and to repeat the 21 days for myself diving in a little bit deeper into into some of the individual stuff and redoing it because this isn't a race there's no finishing line these are just practices for life and it's just a deepening and a deepening and a deepening and while i've been um prepared, like on the spring shed this last week um a song came back onto my radar that um was introduced to me by janet janet otto um in a bible study that nick's introduced me to just before i left uh, probably the year before I, we left joburg and um Janet Otto very sadly lost her husband, Alex, in a very tragic um, cycling. He was cycling and he was hit by a taxi. And um, this was the time just after, literally in the month after he died. And um, he, she came and played the song for us called Burn the Ships. It's by King and Country. And she said this was his favorite song. And especially in the month before he died, he just had it on loud and on repeat and he used to play it for their kids. And so, and I, I started playing it again this, this last two week or two, and I keep wanting to post it on the shed because it's so pertinent to what we're doing. We're burning our ships. We, we setting sail into a new land, into a new time, into a new version of ourselves. And then I played for Pippa because she is burning the ships of her school. She's leaving Wickham Collegiate. She's leaving school. She's leaving home. And I like, listen to the words. Isn't the song amazing? And then I played it for Finn. He says, mum, you've played this. I know this song. You've played it before. But I said, yes, but listen to it for you because you're leaving Port Wallace. And this is the end of your junior school. And so we've been listening to this a lot. And I'll post it on the Spring Shed and um, and on... on um, my mindful moment group, which if you're not on my mindful moment group, I'll stop posting the reminders for the mindful moment on the spring shed. So, so come on to our mindful moment group. It's just for reminders. And so I put on that song again um, this morning as I got into the shower, as I hadn't prepared, all I knew I was doing for this mindful moment was this poem, Everything is Waiting for You. And um, I put on I've been listening to a song in the album and the next song that came up was their song called Control and um, and it just came on and it says you asked me to let go but I thought I knew better afraid of surrender I don't know what and what I don't know I've always had a plan but now I'm so weary and I can see clear, clearly forgot who I am 
So won't you make my eyes your eyes, my ears your ears, my tears your tears, and won't you make my hands your hands, my feet your feet, my dreams your dreams. I give up control, body, mind, and soul. I can't do this on my own, alone. No, I give up control. And it goes on. Um, and I'll share that with you. So it was another message from God. And this is where I find myself today. And I think we might all find ourselves because on this waxing moon, we have now this incredible waxing moon and it's waxing to a super moon. And I haven't listened to the astrology reading. I started listening to it last night in bed and I just couldn't hear it. But all I know about a full moon is it is a vast expanding energy and especially a new uh, a full moon. It's like a giant spotlight. And when it's a super moon, it's like a giant, giant spotlight on nature. All the animals are awake. Everything moves around. Everything's growing. The energy is upwards. The energy is outwards. And personally for us, it's like a giant spotlight on our lives, showing us the things that are working and are not working, showing us where, where our attention needs to go, showing us showing us stuff, revealing our, our lives to us. And this full moon, I know because of astrologically what's happening and what I've been hearing for months, months now, this giant spotlight is also on the world. There are going to be secrets coming out, things being revealed, things, things coming out. And so it's going to be big. There's going to be a lot. And then we're not going to be able to control it all. And we're not going to be able to control our lives. And my time blocking is still an intention. And I still plan to do it. But I've got Port Wallace Golf Day on Thursday. There's just For me, there's no time blocking at the moment. I have to live in flow. But I have to ask for help. And I have to prioritize what's important and what I can focus my energy on. And so I invite you to do the same in your lives for yourselves. Because your life might look different to mine or it might look the same or there might be similarities and differences but I know we're all navigating busy lives and there's also much that we can't control so I invite you to in this moment to receive these words and in doing so to receive to to open up to receiving all the help that is around us in our days today and in our lives in general, and to ask for help and to ask for guidance, to ask for the highest possible outcome in our lives, um, in, in situations, in things we're grappling with, and to not do it on our own. So I invite you to close your eyes or drop your gaze. And just allow these words just to land one more time. As you invite, as settling into your body, as you receive the air that is around, around us, as you receive your breath that is so ever-present, as you receive the nourishment that our breath and these words provide us. Your great mistake is to act the drama as if you were alone as if life were a progressive and cunning crime with no witness to the high, tiny hidden transgressions. To feel abandoned is to deny you, is to deny the intimacy of your surroundings. Surely even you at times have felt the grand array, the swelling presence and the chorus crowding out your solo voice. You must note the way the soap dish enables you or the window a latch grants you freedom. Alertness is the hidden discipline of familiarity. The stairs are your mentor of things to come and the doors have always been there to frighten you and invite you. And the tiny speaker in the phone is your dream ladder to divinity. Put down the weight of your aloneness and ease into the conversation. The kettle is singing, even as it pours your drink. The cooking pots have left their arrogant aloofness 
and seeing the good in you at last. All the birds and creatures of the world are unutterably themselves. Everything is waiting for you. And so just receiving this next breath, following it in through your mouth, your throat, into your chest and belly, noticing how it expands your whole body, your torso, your shoulders, and then following the letting go, the release, the softening, and just noticing it with the next breath and the next. Just allowing your body to receive. Encouraging your body just to soften and expand with each breath. Just gently scanning through your body and noticing if there are areas of holding on. Areas of tension or tightness where you might carry the weight of the world. Perhaps it's your shoulders. Perhaps it's your jaw. Perhaps it's all your whole shoulders and neck and head. And just noticing this at first. And then with gentle compassion, just allowing an invitation, an invitation to softening and opening. And just with each breath, giving yourself gentle compassion as you would for a young child sitting on your lap who's fallen yet again, who's stumbled yet again. Learning to walk is so hard. Learning to run even harder. They're there. It's going to be okay. Just inviting this gentle softening, this gentle compassion to jaw, neck, shoulders, into heart space. Perhaps you want to rest your hands on your heart or rub your arms, squeeze your shoulders, Offer yourself some gentle act of compassion. Stroke your cheeks. Just as you allow each next breath to expand and soften. To let go just a little bit of the weights that we, we bear, that we carry. And then landing in your heart space and inviting a feeling of gratitude for how we are so supported in our daily lives. For the support of the soap dish, of the window latch, 
of the stairs and the doors. tiny speaker on our phone, allowing us to connect with loved ones, to be our dream ladder to divinity. Feeling into this feeling of gratitude as we thank our kettle, our cooking pots, the birds and the creatures of the world. We thank the nature that is around us every day. The sun, the moon, the stars. And perhaps you want to invite other Gratitudes into your heart space, getting less hooked up on the mental thoughts, but just encouraging the feelings of gratitude in your heart space for all it is that nourishes and feeds you every day. Noticing how if we tap into this feeling of gratitude and we hold it in our heart space, how so quickly it just overflows from our heart space. And it tumbles out into our lungs and then into our arteries and arterioles. And it just spreads with this abundance through our bodies, to our abdomen, around all the organs of our abdomen, sweeps them up in our feelings of gratitude for how they're there, digesting, absorbing, nourishing, releasing, creating, excreting. It's the gratitude for the flow that they allow in our body and in our lives for the creativity for the feminine wisdom and energy and expanding beyond from our abdomen into our limbs, our thighs, our hips, our thighs, our knees. Some of us have had hip replacements, some have had knee replacements. We know the value, we understand the value of a hip that's not working, a knee that's not working. And for those of us who haven't experienced that, bringing that gratitude and awareness because we don't know what we don't know. And when we're in pain, we realize how lucky we are not to be in pain. And so offering gratitude for our areas that aren't in pain, our limbs that work, our joints that are stable and supportive, our knees, our ankles, our feet, our toes, our shoulders, our elbows, our hands, our fingers. And if there are areas here that do hold pain or dysfunction or stiffness or stuckness, just noticing those and breathing into them, inviting a softening and an expansion into those joints. Not turning away from the pain, but just breathing into it and being present for it. And then expanding into our shoulders that so often carry the weight of our busy minds, of our busy lives, of our families, of our loved ones, of the world. 
and from our shoulders into our neck to our jaws to our ears our eyes our foreheads nose mouth jaw just holding all of these in our awareness encouraging the gratitude for these incredible senses that we forget to tap into, that we forget to have gratitude for. Our seeing, our hearing, our smell, our taste, and our touch. And knowing that there's another sense that we haven't valued in our Western world, and that is our sixth sense, our intuition, our gut, that brings us all together And by offering gratitude and opening to these senses, to these other senses, and to our bodies, and by dropping into our bodies and into our heart space more often, we will encourage the sense, sense so that it will be our stronger sense and it will guide us and guide our flow guide where we need to go, where we need to connect, where we need to place our focus, our to-do list. And so returning back to our heart space, our gut, knowing that this is where the sixth sense sits, between our heart and our gut and our lungs, our solar plexus, and just dropping into this and sitting here and resting here just for a while. And feeling into the expansion that is in here. And as we do so, we just offer a prayer for the highest possible outcome for our days, for our lives to be guided and led and to notice where we're supported and to be open to that support and to receive that support. To know that we can always ask for help and we can always ask for guidance. And as you sit here in this flash, flash chair of your gut and your heart and your lungs, Just allowing this to land one more time. Your great mistake is to act the drama as if you were alone. As if life were a progressive and cunning crime with no witness to the tiny hidden transgressions. To feel abandoned is to deny the intimacy of your surroundings. To feel abandoned is to deny the intimacy of your surroundings. Surely even you at times have felt the grand array, the swelling presence and the chorus crowding out your solo voice. You must note the way the soap dish enables you or the window latch grants you freedom. Alertness is the hidden discipline of familiarity. The stairs are your mentor of things to come. The doors have always been there to frighten you and invite you. And the tiny speaker in the phone is your dream ladder to divinity. Put down the weight of your aloneness and ease into the conversation. The kettle is singing even as it pours you a drink. The cooking pots have left their arrogant aloofness and seeing the good in you at last. All the birds and creatures of the world are unutterably themselves. Everything is waiting for you. And so pausing the moment to offer gratitude for everything that is waiting for us. 
perhaps resting in your hands on your heart one last time or giving yourself a hug, squeezing your shoulders, moving into your shoulders, your neck, your toes, your feet, your fingers. And when you're ready, gently opening your eyes and taking note of everything that's around you, here supporting you, including the names and faces on this mindful moment. Thank you all for your love and support. I wish you a very blessed day and a blessed week. Once again, you're welcome to unmute and share if there's anything that landed for you or put something in the chat or also comment on the groups that you are on later because it will encourage others to listen to you. And if you feel that this is something that landed for you, perhaps it will land for someone else. Like this. Thank you all. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Gail. I'll just give a few moments for anyone to put anything in the chat or to unmute or just to be here together. So thank you. Thank you, Gail, sending you love. And so lovely to hear that you and Nikki are doing the art of living together. You would have loved it. Oh my gosh. It was Colin's favorite. Colin actually did it. He absolutely loved it. He um I couldn't believe it. But and I, you know, I think I've done quite a lot of courses and things in my time and I loved it. Colin really loved it. Um I can't imagine no. what we'll Bruce there, but, no. but maybe yeah. baby steps. <laughs> Bruce won't won't be there, but uh, he's enjoyed doing the. Even though he won't admit it, he thoroughly enjoyed doing the spring shed. Oh yeah! Well, oh, please send him love. Please, I will. Please tell him to listen to this from me, and that at the yeah. end of the special message. I will. I will. Every okay. morning we get together, go through the words. Uh, we I read to him the words of the spring shed, and he really is enjoying all that. He loves knowledge, and oh, so he's really. So, oh, thank you, Gail. That is so wonderful. I think maybe Colin and I will do that for our second round of the Spring Shed starting on Monday. It's been a lovely, lovely way of, of starting the morning, I must say. It is. But, very good. I'm so the, for that. Going to, going to do the Art of Living course again. It, uh, I did it in 2004. That's because mm -hmm. I had to put, I actually did it. And I can't believe it's so long ago. So refreshing everything is uh -huh. going to be. Yeah, that's and, an incredible thing. It's such a long-standing course. It's been going for so long. There's so many people all over the world doing it. It's so vast. And you, when you, I mean, I heard about it for the first time, like obviously from Stella, um, and then did it in Joburg, and couldn't believe how many millions of people do it, and how many millions of people have done it, and how big the community is. And I'd never heard of it. Yeah, and I mean, and that the Harvard have actually done a study on it, and it's just so beneficial. So yeah. it's no phenomenal, phenomenal course. I'm really looking forward to doing it again. So very uh, sad that you you can't come and do it with Nick and I, but <laughs> maybe the following because there's a follow on one which I haven't done and which I'd love to do. So if you do a follow on one in next year or yeah. something, maybe let me know and I'll come do it with you then. Yeah, we'll make a plan with that. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to do that. So I'm just going to read through the chat. Thank you, Gail. So Hilda says, when we are morning, everyone from beautiful wet Joburg, so grateful for the rain. Yeah, that's the blessing is the rain. And we are so used to giving, receiving can feel rather vulnerable. And and rain is such a symbol of receiving. Hey, the, the earth is just receiving so much. And yeah, just receiving can feel very, very vulnerable. And that's as us. Our feminine energy is all about receiving, but we so societalized out of it receiving that we... We think it's it's something that's bad or shameful, which is, and it's not. That's and again, we go back to we've been taught that all the places where we should fear, that's actually where our true power lies. Everything from birth, period, our periods, menopause, orgasm, death, number thirteen, receiving feminine energy, all these things. That's actually where our power lies. 
Thank you, Bashi. Thank you. Thanks, Mum. Yeah, there is the wild they had a wild wind last night. Nature's responding to the coming full moon. It's gonna be big. Um, and we're gonna need to 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 ground. Sending love to you all. Wishing you a blessed day.